Welcome campers to part four of our 2022 Eastern Sierra trip. In this episode, we boondock in the volcanic tablelands just north of Bishop and visit the Owens River area. Join us as we search for hidden petroglyphs in this rugged landscape. Let's get started. We headed south on 395 to Bishop. It was a nice day out and we were looking forward to some great weather over the next few days. The volcanic tablelands is a unique and beautiful landscape located near Bishop, California that contains a fascinating history and geological features. This area is administered by the BLM and camping is free with the usual restrictions. We chose to camp along one of the Tuffa Folds, which provides shelter from the wind. Although not a problem during our visit, it can be quite windy here. Fortunately for us, one of the largest spots happened to be vacant, so we grabbed it. Here you can see our rig as we drive back down the road. Let's investigate the other sites along this road, which dead ends about a quarter mile from our campsite. The end spot is definitely nicest, with plenty of room. Alas, it was taken. There's a nice turnaround here for just about any sized rig. We're gonna duck into camp now for a bit before we head out for an adventure. We headed back towards the entrance and took Chalk Bluff Road West following the Owens River. Fishing here is all catch and release with barbless hooks. This large cross was erected in 1964 by the Knights of Columbus as a memorial to John F. Kennedy who had just recently been assassinated. This area is home to thousands of petroglyphs, some created over 3,000 years ago. They provide a glimpse into the ancient culture and history of the area. The rock formations stand in stark contrast to the Owens River which winds through the green valley below. There is a diverse range of wildlife that lives in the volcanic tablelands. Coyotes, bobcats, desert tortoises, as well as a wide variety of birds and snakes too. If you remember our first episode in this series, we were camping up near the headwaters of this river, around June Lake, about 40 or so miles northwest of here. The elevation is about 4,700 feet, and it tends to get rather warm here in the summer. We were interested to see some of the petroglyphs located around here. They were created by the prehistoric Paiute and Sashuni people who lived here at the time. These petroglyphs are considered very sacred by the indigenous people. As visitors, we must respect and care for them. Unfortunately, Deng had injured her ankle about a week earlier and was unable to accompany me up the steep trail. The sun was beating down pretty well and it was warm for early October. I was tempted to crawl into this hole to get out of the sun. It's a short hike up, but pretty steep. On top of being steep, the trail was rather loose and slippery. Although Dang was injured, she followed along with the drone and we communicated via walkie-talkie. These hawks came over to check out the drone. I was huffing and puffing pretty good by the time I got to the top. The view from up there was spectacular, with the Owens River in the foreground against the background of the Sierras. There is a particular petroglyph I was very interested in seeing, called Sky Rock. It is somewhat unique in that it is on a horizontal plate as opposed to most petroglyphs that are vertical. I did not, however, have any directions on how to find it. Its location is not readily available in an attempt to help preserve it from the masses. 
I should have known it would not be right at the top of the trail. I scouted around here for a bit, but didn't see any petroglyphs. I didn't expect to be up here long, and so I didn't bring my camera, but in hindsight I wish I had. Striking out there, I elected to head up the trail. It was pretty well traveled, and I had a thought that it might take me right to the object of my pursuit. The trail got smaller and smaller as I traveled further in. This didn't make a lot of sense to me as there was nowhere for people to go. At this point I did not realize there was a road on the other side of the rocky tuffa fold. Next trip we may try to find that road. I continued up the trail for half a mile or so, occasionally venturing up into the rocks to scout around. While I didn't find any petroglyphs, Dang accidentally found a few with her drone while she was searching for me. This one is known as 13 Moons. Not sure if this is a legitimate petroglyph or not. If you know about it, please leave a comment in the section below. The volcanic tablelands were formed over 700,000 years ago when lava erupted from the Long Valley Caldera and flowed across the landscape, creating a unique and rugged terrain of volcanic rock and ash. Let's head back to the truck and explore some other areas. We decided to head up to the Chidago Canyon Petroglyphs. They are about eight or so miles north of us on a well-maintained fish slough dirt road. Fish slough has its own set of petroglyphs, but we didn't stop for them on this trip. Chidago Canyon has a large number of petroglyphs and they are more readily accessible. Some bozos have defaced this sacred area. This road heads east down Chidago Canyon for quite some ways, coming out on the 6 eventually. That's Highway 6 right there in the background, also known as Grand Army of the Republic Highway. They only get about 6 inches of precipitation annually here, which is surprising given how much snow falls on the Sierras which are not far away. You can see the BLM has the petroglyphs fenced off in hopes of preserving them. I guess our Santa artist didn't get the memo. Petroglyphs at this site date back about 1500 years. It is believed this was a ceremonial site where shaman practiced their spiritual magic. Now that's a pretty busy petroglyph. I wonder what it means. As the sun was going down, we headed back to camp. The moon was perfect. We tried both AT&T and Verizon, but the signal was not good. Starlink was fantastic, however. I'll 
put the GPS coordinates for the site we were at in the description in case you are interested. You can see the lights from Bishop in the distance, but it was dead quiet at camp. This site is awesome for solar and we had plenty of power. Later that night, I turned the lights on to cook dinner outside and it seemed to interest this little guy. The next day, Dang headed out to do some photography and get more drone footage. If you drive up Chalk Bluff Road far enough, you run into the Pleasant Valley Owens River Campground. There are some interesting rocks along the drive. The river just winds around in a series of tight U-turns. It seems like it would be a lot more efficient to just flow in a straight line, but that's not how Mother Nature works, I guess. Dang's attention was caught by the sight of this large, dead tree in the distance. Intrigued, she decided to stop and explore it further. I wonder how it died. Those are the White Mountains off in the background, which is east of us. It's been many years since we visited the Bristlecone Pines. We will have to arrange a trip up there one of these days. Nestled between the Sierras to the west and the White Mountains to the east, you have mountains all around. This area is also famous for its rock climbing and bouldering options. You have sad boulders, which I understand offers tighter and more challenging climbs, and then there is happy boulders, which has some easier options. Here we look down on Chalk Bluff Road, which was closed before the reservoir. Dang had to detour. Pleasant Valley Reservoir and its 136-foot dam finished construction in 1923. This was part of a controversial project to bring Sierra water to Los Angeles. The road that takes you here is very rocky and requires a high-clearance four-wheel drive vehicle. Although it looks like there might be some generation happening down there, I don't think there is. We put a lot of thought and effort into this video, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would appreciate your feedback. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next episode where we explore the Alabama Hills.